storytelling, storytelling Ron. This is going to be a rough video um, about pagans. And I don't even know if I'll upload it or not. I don't even know how this is going to turn out, but I'm going to go for it. All right, I'm going to read this thing here about pagans from Harvard. So that makes sense. Uh, Harvard, what do pagans do? The Pluralism Project at Harvard. And it's got all these pagan stuff. Kind of a good resource for us, actually, to, to do for the little RPG because it tells you kind of what they're... In a PG homogenized vanilla sense, what pagans do. Uh, I'm going to read a bit of this and see how far I get um, before I start just rambling and banter. Okay. Pagan traditions have a strong focus on ritual. Oh, and this has to do with RPGs, by the way. Ritual. Practitioners may draw from multiple sources or follow a single contemporary pagan tradition. The largest of the latter is Wicca, a form of religious witchcraft that includes dozens of lineages, paths, and styles. Other traditions include du druidry druidry non-wiccan forms of religious witchcraft heathenry and asutra northern european paganism feminist goddess worship and a variety of reconstructionisms including greek egyptian celtic roman canaanite yeah canaanite that's that's interesting um the canaanites were a part of the jewish culture or part of the jewish jewish lineage so when the jews went back to retake israel uh, and God ordained that area and they had to fight the Canaanites. They were literally fighting their own people. And the Canaanites were sacrificing babies, like mass scale. They were sacrificing, sacrificing humans on a mass scale. They were inbred. They were sexually degenerate and, and perverse. And uh, so when the Jews went there and um, they, they were literally cleansing out paganism, which is the Canaanites, and they were sacrificing babies. Uh, I think there, a description I had was, so the mother would not hear the, okay, this is going to get R rated but it's from a Christian video. So the mothers would not hear the screams of their babies. They, the, the, the rituals did the drums really loud, the music really loud, and the baby was burned alive. Um, so this is what, you know, they're not going to mention in this article at all. The commonality of paganism is human sacrifice. Inevitably. There's a great quote by, I don't know, it was someone like Bernard Shaw or someone, you know, the English, like, why in paganism, why is it inevitably that they have to sacrifice a human? Every pagan religion will inevitably have to sacrifice a human. Why? Because they don't, they're not going to get what they want in paganism. Paganism is all about getting something, a ritual, a, 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 your prayers, your meditations. You, you want something, you want something, you want a life cheat. Your life sucks. You want a life cheat. You want your, uh, some, some magical power to get you what you want, your health, your success, your wealth, your love, uh, and Right, probably not going to happen. Or if it does, you're going to have to continually use that ritual and the power and th that cell to get what you want. And if you don't get what you want, which is kind of the life le story, li which is actually what the Bible says, <laughs> you're not going to get what you want. If you don't get what you want, uh, you're going to have to start getting sanguinari. You know, it's a moribund religion. Paganism is. Uh, you're going to have to get bloodletting. You're going to have to do human sacrifice. Sanguinari. Um, Pagan rituals commonly focus on honoring, honoring a deity or deities. Well, what if those deities don't give you what you want? Observing natural cycles, which can get brutal, such as seasonal changes or the waxing and waning of the moon, or celebrating rites of passage, such as birth, transitioning into adulthood, marriage, and death. Although the form of ritual varies by tradition, pagan rituals tend to engage the participants physically. Rituals often include, I'm going to get to a point here, drumming, chanting, and dancing. Some pagans offer food or drink, now imagine uh, role-playing games sitting around at a table. Uh, some pagans offer food or drink to their gods or ancestors. These offerings may be shared by their participants as part of a feast or sometimes disposed of ritually. Representations of earth, air, fire, water. Gee, I wonder if, if uh, we use that in role-playing games. May also be employed for cleansing and consecration. For instance, participants might anoint themselves with salt water, earth, and water and burn incense like candles. Air and fire as part of ritual preparation. Okay, so... You know, I could go on about all this. It's very, it's, it's, it's actually kind of neat. I, I kind of like, oh, actually, you know, I'm going to get some ideas out of these articles. And, and, and I actually appreciate that it's vanilla and PG because, uh, you know, the, the stuff I've read about what pagans actually do is, is so horrific and horrifying and, and torturous that, uh, yeah, you don't want to, um, <laughs> I kind of don't, don't want to come across it in most, most of my readings, uh, if I can help it. I'd like to be warned, but for here's here's one thing I, I noticed here. The, the Thor's hammer was a, a tradition a traditional religious pendant worn by those resisting Christian conversion in medieval Scandinavia. Um, in I'm just going to jump around here. In the player's handbook, uh, let me go and switch up to a full page here. You you know, and 
and you know like i say i wish dungeons and dragons was you know i certainly have gro- fond memories growing up with dungeons and dragons but imagine if you ca- your kids instead of growing up with dungeons and dragons grow up with for the lord rpg a, a christian evangelist thing where they adventure out and, and fight monsters and convert people so in in the player's handbook right you've got i mean you know the, the druid the cleric every character class has some sort of pagan uh terminology in it but also what i want to get to is obviously it's in the back but uh it's the the gods right so they have gods back here i'm going past the spells and to the very end here where you know you can pick out your gods or your realm um uh, and you know and let's not let's, let's talk about the warlock where you got to pick a god no matter, no matter what gods of the multiverse so multiverse is an evolutionary term and, and pagans believe in evolution they they absolutely believe in evolution which is so funny um they all follow evolution 10,000 years 30,000 years ago a million years ago uh okay so deities are the they have the deities you know they got a whole list of gods and this is just the, the fantasy ones uh that you can pick from and but what's interesting too they have a section here on fantasy historical pantheons the celtic pantheon the greek pantheon the egyptian pantheon and the norse pantheon and they got all the gods listed right but you could use those how come they don't have the christian gods like jesus well it's only three jesus god and the holy spirit i guess i think you catholic with a bunch of saints or something um but how come they don't have like christians i mean isn't it guys isn't it fantasy isn't christianity fantasy to you well that's a real world religion well so are these these are real world religions thor i just mentioned there's thor in here how come you don't get get rid of him then yeah because there's they use thor's hammer and in modern days they use thor's hammer and they use these religions uh pagans pagans in the real world worship all these things that you mention in here except for jesus christ you know so how come you don't have uh why don't you get rid of that you know or not use those or or um and another thing pagans can make up whatever they want they right it just says up here in the article they can pick and choose um here pa- you know pagans uh get, all right where does this i just want to get the word down um pagan traditions have a focus on brutal okay, sources or or follow a single contemporary pagan the largest of the latter form of religion includes dozens dozens of lineages paths and styles other traditions include um, but including, you know, the Greek, some protectors, some practitioners, practitioners of Afro-Caribbean religions also make themselves as pagans. Well, others do not. Well, they're all pagan. But um, this, so paganism is just whatever you want to make up. Okay. Whatever you want to pick and choose. And, but they all have the same essence of feeling like the, 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 they have to do rituals, pageantry, show off, but they want something. They want something out of it. They want a life cheat. Whether it's a drug, a rape drug, you know, a love potion. Whether it's uh, to to, uh, to 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 know the future so that they know, you know, they know how to get the job ahead of you. They want they want a life cheat to jump in front of you to get to be successful, not because they're getting, they're good at it, but because they they prayed to their god, and there's a chance that they're not going to get it right. And uh, then what are they going to do? Well, they're going to pray harder, and that didn't work. Well, they're going to have to do some bloodletting. Uh, gee, the, 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 the hamster didn't work. Uh, well, they got to get a bigger creature then because they keep failing in life. They're not going to get whatever they want. And if they did say, get something right, they're going to want the next thing. They're going to want the next thing. Uh, in Christianity, we only have one bledding and that's Jesus Christ. And it is finished, but we don't have, we're done. We're done. That's it. I don't have to bloodlet anybody. I'm done. I don't have to do anything. I'm saved by Jesus Christ's blood. So by grace so i don't have to tell you what to do or or get anything out of you or when and when i pray it's really about health and blessings but you know if they happen or they don't happen and when they don't happen i have to accept that too because i can't bloodlet anything because uh jesus bloodlet himself how am i going to go how am i going to pa- surpass that how am i going to pass a god saying i have sacrificed for you so what am i going to sacrifice then that's going to be um, impress him nothing so i am not going to sacrifice you or anyone else or a, a rabbit or a hamster um you know because uh, jesus christ did it so uh paganism though uh let me go back to, uh i just want to do a little bit more here to, 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 uh, but I, I, yeah, let's see i got all these buttons to push here 
I need an assistant that does all this for me. Uh, an editing assistant. Um, oh, I had this highlighted. Um, oh, so one thing I noticed too, and this is, I'm going to go on a little rant here, a little off rant, but it's a rant. Um, the, the, the pay, so it's claiming here in this Harvard study that um, Christianity copied uh, some pagan stuff, baby Horus, portrayal of Isis and baby Horus. Um, okay, BS. I mean, uh, check this out. Um, f- sure, there can be mothers and sons and God, demigods and all that. But there was this film documentary that came out called Zeitgeist, something like Zeitgeist in, in the um, uh, 90s or something. And uh, I'm going to say I know someone personally who uh, grew up in, uh, in the church and was, you know, cloister than church and then went to a state university and there uh some in some class some pagan professor uh showed this documentary to all the students and of course this person i know sent it to me and i watched it and i was like wow this is crazy and at the time i was conservative but not christian i was becoming christian but not necessarily I, i was thinking about it but i wasn't but but the film really bothered me it really uh uh it's it was very drug addled in the sense of uh, the, the first opening sequence was all about like the in, in, military industrial complex, the Republicans or whatever. And it kept showing like route rockets going off and explosions and it had this weird narrative where it was talking about uh, and, and the, the banks controlling everything, you know, so it was very weird and conspiratorial. And it really, it really like was a psych psychotic kind of, it really op- um, worked on your fear nerves or whatever, uh, puts you in a state of fear. Um, and then went right into, uh, how Christian Christianity, it was all animated too, like flash animations where it would, it would show one, the, a Christian icon and then it would morph into a pagan thing and how that the Christianity came from paganism. It was very like, uh, 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 animated and the fear that you had from the first section then turned into anger because you were being lied to about Christianity in the second section. Um, and it took, and I, and I, I kind of like was like, wow, I must have been a Calvin then and then didn't realize it. But I was like, well, either this dude's going to not you know, reject this um, or he's going to accept it and become a left wing fanatic, which. OK, so but. Um, um, later on, you know, finally, because it's really hard, uh, a lie. Here's the here's the saying, I think I, I, anyway. Before the truth can wake up in the morning, a lie will have traveled around the world. You know, a lie will get up and travel around the world before the truth can wake up in the morning. Uh, and that's what happened with this this thing. The zeitgeist got spread everywhere, all the universities. So, so there's this whole generation of uh, pagans that were born from this this documentary that was spread amongst the university kids in the 90s, 2000s, whatever. And uh, same with Bill Maher's religiosity, the same thing, you know, just boom, just spread across. Everyone gets all angry, hates Christianity. Um and it took a little while then for Christians to look at this thing and go, wait a minute, uh, all, you know, all this stuff is crap. You know, there's no, they're reverse engineering Christianity to fit p- paganism. They're reverse engineering it as opposed to actually going to ancient resources to, um, you know, then claim this. So what they're doing and in the 19th century, they did that too. The atheist, uh, humanists did that too. They, they reverse engineered Christianity to make it sound like they were copying um, pagan ideas. And here's the thing, pagan, and let's just in the basic logistics, pagan ideas can be anything. So they could reverse engineer into them. That's the truth. Uh, Christianity is set. It's set. It doesn't change. It's set, uh, for God three, uh, 4,000 years ago and set for Jesus Christ 2000 years ago. It's set. Okay. Copying or not copying, uh, similarities or not similarities. It's set. It's not changing. Paganism can change over and over. Right? Why not? Um, so very, very frustrating about that. I, that was an experience I had, uh, for, you know, in a personal level that, um, um, yeah. So anyway, and it's ongoing today. Um, okay. So here, another th- interesting thing about this is it's, it talks about, uh, how the historical challenges and how paganism is persecuted and, cr- you know, cr- you know, punishable by death and, crime of heresy, but it doesn't talk about, and, the, and then the women were subjugated, you know, they couldn't do re- practice midwifery, but it doesn't talk about all the, uh, corruption and horror and, uh, uh, child sacrifices and murders and poisonings and, 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 and love drugs. Yeah. There could be a midwife for every witch is, is going to do white magic. Every witch is going to try to appeal to the people. 
But then she's going to go, oh, I also have this other magic. And they're not going to bring that up in this article. They're not going to bring up the manipulation, the the love potions, which are rape drugs, um, that the, the midwifery's also did. No, let's not talk about that. Let's just talk about, oh, the poor women were subjugated. And the practice of, say, men controlling medicine did not just, you know, oh, I'm going to control medicine. It happened over time because of what the what crap was going on with midwifery. Okay. It happened over time because I read the, the what the monks punishments for midwifery was in the sixth century. And it wasn't even punishment for midwifery. It was punishment for the evil things that they were doing. The whole, the sexual perversity things, the, the blood sanguinary things, uh, and the, and the punishments were fastings. Okay. So in the sixth century, the, the, the Christian monks were trying to deal with this in a nice way. And 600 years later, it did not work. Okay. So for 600 years or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever, it didn't work. They got worse and worse. Okay. The, the midwifery's and the, and the witches and stuff. It, it got, it got, even the pagan leaders did not like witches. Why? Because they knew exactly what they were doing. They were manipulative and controlling and, and doing horrible things. Now, were there some good women trying to be women of medicine? Sure. But guess what? They, they were not even accepted. I bet by the witches who controlled them. There was compl- there was plenty of jealousy and control amongst them. That was more devious and diabolical than what the, the institutions of men were doing. Try being a, a witch who does good stuff only and helps people only with no abortion, with no abortion or no drugs or, you know, no, no love potions. No, like try being that kind of a, a, a good witch in, in this community and see what happens to you. Yeah. Exactly. They're not going to bring that up. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, so contemporary. Okay. So this, le- this bit here is going quicker than I thought. Uh, and this is all in the same little thing here. So if you, if you want to get ideas for, um, now I'm going to say something real quick to you, Christian men out there. Um, if you are have uh, sexual uh, issues like with uh, pornography if if you see these witches and these you know goth and and all that and it, and it brings up in you a very um sexual uh addiction or allurement or you're or lusting okay then don't do any of this right stay away um get get right with god cleanse yourself you know maybe you need maybe you're not married and and you know whatever if these things are luring you into perversities and desires, stop. Don't, don't, don't go there. Don't, don't research. Don't hang out with, you know, stick with church, get your wife, get a wife, have some kids grow up that way. Stay homogenized in that sense and support, you know, whatever, but don't do it. Now you could be a player, but don't be a GM. If, 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 if researching this stuff is going to lure, lure you into lusts and sin. Okay. I look at these things and I'm amazed at what God and Jesus has done in my life. And when I see porn or beautiful things or whatever, I look at it and then I, Oh my God, that looks retarded. You know, like here on sunset, I used to see those big billboards with the hot women, you know, all the time, uh, the, the models, you know, with the deal, whatever the, all the fashion or sunglasses or, you know, they'd have these posters up and it'd be like, you know, when I was a pagan, it was so like, oh yeah, you know, I would do that kind of thing. But now it's like, oh, <laughs> how old are they? Oh my gosh. Is that, is that like a girl? Is she 15? Cause and, and is, are they making her like little, how much makeup do they have on her to make her look like maybe she's older, but barely older, you know? And they're, you know, I just, that's the way I look at it now. I look at them and I say, I know there's like some dude holding the light right over off the, you know, you know, and she's like that. And they're, you know, with her sunglasses, you know what I mean? Like, and that's all I see now. I see like the stupidity of these things. Uh, I see the truth in the, 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 the porn and the, and the, and the, and the, the photos and all that. And I just see the, uh, retardedness of it all. Um, so if any, I'm suggesting to people to go study this paganism for, for the Lord RPG to get just to get cool, creepy stories to, for the, for the role playing games. But if it does lure you into something, then don't do this. Okay. So just get that point across to you. Um, anyway, so 
This, this last bit, last bit here about paganism. During the last few decades, the American pagan community has multiplied dramatically. Many pagans attribute the movement's growth to attractiveness of life-affirming spirituality in an alienating society. And think about role-playing games, because Dungeons and & Dragons, all that is very much a part of this. And, um, and I would say, you know, this is my guess, but most, about 100% of pagans play Dungeons & Dragons or some form of role-playing games. Or have played one, you know? Um... Some people are drawn to pagan ways because of the celebration of seasonal holidays. And by the way, when I when I say that, I'm not saying role playing games is is inherently pagan, although it is technically because of the histor you know the uh, the statistically speaking it is. Uh, I'm saying that we Christians can absolutely use it, and it was made by Christians originally. So blah blah blah. But um, um, and then we we accidentally let pagans take it over, which we have done with everything. Right? Disney was made by a Christian. Okay, now. When we create things, we, you know, I think back then, especially we really thought in the seventies and eighties, there wasn't a member apologetics did not come into really play until recently. So as Christians, when we create stuff, we, we didn't think of evangelism and, and because there was no one to evangelize, right? It was a Christian society. We didn't need to evangelize. So in the seventies and eighties and nineties, we didn't need to evangelize because everyone was Christian or had a Christian ethos. So it was kind of unnecessary to evangelize. It was more about just having a good church and living a good life and then creating something today. Obviously we need to evangelize. Uh, we need to get back into evangelism. So we need to bring it into the games into RBGs and stuff because the, the, the paganism is becoming really huge and and dominating uh, in culture, and uh, that's not good. It's 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 diluting our kids. It's diluting us. We're lulling. Okay. So anyway, let me go back to this. Okay. Uh, many pagan attribute many pagans attribute the movement's growth to attractiveness of life affirming spirituality in an alienating society. Some people are drawn to pagan ways because of the celebrations of the seasonal holidays, the par participatory rituals, or the prospect of living relationships to the elements of nature. Yeah, these are all the people doing the the earth the the, the protests too, right? Earth, air, fire, water, spirit. Others build. Others hope to build a connection to the polytheistic religious practices of their ancestors, or seek a religious community that specifically welcomes gay, lesbian, bisexual, trans, and transgender people full as full participants. Well, where did that come from? Well, it makes total sense. But uh, yeah, the whole sexual perversity thing is pagans accept every they're so tolerant of everything just not jesus christ but they're so tolerant of everything just not jesus christ but they're so we're so open we want everything just not jesus christ okay okay no actually they do have jesus christ but not the jesus they get the they get the he gets us jesus christ yeah the he gets us jesus christ that's the one they want uh contemporary paganism also attracts people because of its reverence for the goddess or goddesses yeah of course, many women, especially, oh, this is hilarious. Many women, especially during the feminist movements of the late 60s and early 70s, were drawn to pagan traditions. They found connection with goddess imagery to be empowering and welcomed to the leader and welcomed the leadership opportunities that existed for them within pagan circles. More recently, queer identified pagans have undergone a similar process. Today, there is a growing movement within paganism to develop queer and transgender traditions, transgender traditions, and to recover images of gender fluid deities from ancient mythologies. So, I get my coffee thing here. So yeah, this is um, makes sense, right? And Dungeons and Dragons is actually that. Yeah. Selling herbs, candles, and books serve as social centers. Um, all kinds of you know things happening now, and, and Facebook and Twitter and and um, ooh, video conferencing, online classrooms, and okay, so they got all kinds of things to go do here. Um, I'm surprised they don't mention. Uh, Many pagans also want to access professional services of people who share their religion, counselors, hospital and prison chaplains, legal clergy for weddings and funerals, and trained teachers for youth and adult education. At the same time, pagans continue to struggle with questions of whether paid clergy will undermine the egalitarianism of pagan communities. Oh, man. So, sorry, I'm reading quietly now. Um, but um, paganism is, is, is a big thing. Um and uh so what i'm saying is since it is a big thing and since we don't want religion in our role-playing games then get rid of it out of the role-playing games so how about no gods and no religion but no of course not they're gonna have gods everything is gonna have a god right shadow dark has two women lawful good women gods uh, no men will lawful good just women um so if you want to do that that's fine because i don't know but anyway as a christian um, they're telling us to, we don't, we shouldn't bring in our religion into the game, yet they're bringing, they're, they're making religion. Paganism is about making up religion. So why are they getting paganism in the game then? 
Well, because they are, because they are, and they've lied to you and you're lying to yourself. And uh, you know, we've been lying to ourselves about this. So it's time, it's time to be a Christian in the RPGs. And guess what? You're gonna get kicked out. You're gonna lose those people that wanna play, I just wanna play a game. Uh, so my my cleric worships the holy God of human sacrifice and uh, for good, of course, and uh, we do good things while sacrificing humans, you know. What, you know, so, so my thing is, uh, it's time, it's time to stop playing Dungeons and Dragons, stop playing Star Wars and all these games, you know, maybe one day we'll be able to play them again in, in heaven. But um, it's time because we, we need to evangelize. And and it's the burden, the yoke is light, the burden is not heavy. It's This is fun. I'm enjoying it so much. I'm going to, you know, you have, it's not, d d is not a sacred cow. Not even third edition. Not advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Definitely not fourth edition from what I hear. Um, fifth edition first, you know, is not a sacred cow. You do not worship it. You do not worship, uh, all the OSRs that are coming out. If they don't have Jesus Christ in it, get, get it out, get out of it. I'm, you know, I'm being, I'm being hyperbolic, but it's, um, kind of like, what, what are we doing? What are you doing for the Lord? What are you doing for the Lord? Now you don't, I mean, you know, you don't have to do my game, but do something that's you're a Christian there. Yeah. You're going to get, yeah, they, they, no, you can't do that start living a life where people tell you no because of your faith right start living a life where people start kicking you out um you know and we're not we're not violent we're not sanguinarian we do not believe in um bloodlust we don't believe in hurting anyone we don't believe in forcing anyone uh we believe in freedom of speech we are that's inherent to us the only power we have over pagans is kicking them out of our church. That's the only power we have. Now, the, the one inevitable power of pagans or Christians or anyone is legislation. That's the peaceful way of doing things. So if we do vote in something, you know, that illegalizes paganism, it has to be through peaceful legislation where the, the majority of people accept that. Same and same with you pagans. If you really wanted to uh, make Christianity illegal, you would do it through legislation. I mean, if you could do it peacefully, that would be the way to do it. Uh, and of course, we Christians would say no, and we would, you know, be we would die and be persecuted by you. But you did it legally. I mean, I don't know if we would fight that. Uh, I don't, you know, it, it wouldn't be the thing we do. It, and the Bible doesn't say fight it. The Bible says that, you know, we will be, we'll be persecuted um, and killed. So it doesn't say we will fight you. We will, you know, like we will jihad you. It doesn't say that in the in the New Testament that that's what we're going to do or we're supposed to do. Uh, it just says we we could possibly be persecuted and 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 executed for our faith and for those who hold on to our to, to Jesus Christ. Many will surrender or give up or whatever, um, but it says in the Revelations, I think, and you know that we inevitably at some point we're going to have to be persecuted. But also it says too that we will be. Um, we shouldn't suffer too much through it. Like it should be relatively short period of time and you know, the end times or whatever. My point being we all pagans and Christians in the battlefield of ideas or whatever, uh, hopefully we'll do it peacefully and through legislation. And obviously legislation is a force, but it's a for forewarn thing for both sides that we have won this victory, you know, this, this culture, this society, and you must, you know, concede or whatever to us kind of a thing. Anyway, that's my point. Christians, we are not, we are not supposed to um, start a war or revolutionize or kill anyone or, you know, genocide or terrorize. Uh, we do start a war if there's an injustice for sure, but not if, if everything's going sort of, you know, Oh boy, pagans are taking over this country. We need to move or get out of here or, or die or, or go to prison, whatever, you know, I mean, they're taking it over in the sense of legislation. Like, you know, everyone's voting pagan. Anyway, so that's my point. Uh, we're not violent. We're not forcing it on you. And will that be reciprocated? That's, I'm kind of intrigued by that because I don't know if you guys got any rules specifically about loving the enemy. Um, since you all make up your rules as pagans, I don't know how effective uh, uh, a rule that says don't hate your enemies uh, is going to be when when hate and emotion are um, part of making up stuff. So I don't know if that's going to work for you guys, but for us, it's a tantamount rule by Jesus Christ himself, love the enemy. And that means, uh, we have to do that. And we have to continually, uh, 
admonish our, each other as Christians if we don't, um, and remind each other if we don't. And if, if a Christian goes a pagan, I mean, sorry, <laughs> I slipped out. If a Christian goes violent or we, you know, the other Christians go to go, Hey, uh, that's not Christian, but some Christians could go violent cause well, they're not Christian or they're failing as a Christian. Um, so, um, yeah, we're supposed to love the enemy. Um, is that, does the pagan follow that rule? Well, they could up to a point, you know, till it doesn't fit their makeup made up religion. So that's a problem, isn't it? Uh, or maybe it's not a problem, but it will be in the end. So, um, okay. Well, for the little RPG, start a, start a game, be a GM or a player, get a game going, start doing fellowship and edification and having a whole heck of a lot of fun. And today I got Christians in space and they're going to do something really cool. I got to work on some more, just detailing it up more trappy stuff and traps and ambushes and then space battles and aliens but genetically modified humans and creatures um from earth anyway okay the game of life the game of life christian men pagans keep doing what you're doing i guess but try love the enemy as a permanent solid belief that you put in stone on your stone things uh the game of life christian men roll holy dice